Holy cow. So freaking pod. Chap Chapter, Chapter 18. 18. Hi, it's Charles. It's true, Jim. It's Chad. Let's get on with the summary. Anna gets checked out by the OBGYN, Dr. Green. Shit is crazy. Like, seriously. Anastasia and the doc get up to who knows what behind the closed doors, and at the end, the doc gives her a script for some really tiny pills. Christian's stern school barm charm comes back into play when he chastises Anastasia for picking a new daily responsibility to keep track of, and worse yet, it's a pill. Why didn't she choose the gummies or the lollipops? Christian and Anna eat a meal, and you wouldn't <laughs> believe where and how they do it. And when you find out what they eat, you'll be floored. It's Chicken Caesar Calipolg. Which is a sword <laughs> from Celtic myth. Like, it's, a, it's actually a salad. Um, the breakfast is really a huge turn on for both of them because salt and fat are the two strongest aphrodisiacs known to humankind. So they retire to the womb room. And then some stuff I think we can all guess happens. But it's a little different than before. Like, Christian has a thing, and Anna's on a thing? They do it like three times? Who can keep track? Anna's exhausted, so Christian carries her to her room, tucks her in, and turns out the light, completely depriving her of a bedtime story. Okay, and they had sex this chapter, and here is the summary of the sex. This time, Christian and Anastasia go to the so-called Red Ranger Room of Pain Shin. It's very muda da 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 da. Uh, Christian assumes the domhood, and Anastasia obliges his whims. So to clarify, he has her do some stuff like strip down and kneel on the floor, and not meet his eyes to get her in the sub mindset, and he also like braids her hair. So the first implement Christian introduces is the the brown plated leather riding crop of legend. Well, like the one that Anna dreamed about. Excavated from the darkest depths of the Red Room closet space, Christian uses the sacred artifact to poke at Anna for a bit and eventually pokes her in a really sensitive spot and this makes her very happy or satisfied or whatever. I don't know anything about human biology, okay? I'll, I'll help you, person who wrote the summary. Uh, Christian smacks Anastasia with the red and crop on her vagina and she likes it. And then he puts the juicified crop in her mouth and then he starts slapping her with it again and she has an orgasm from that. This is, of course, after Christian shackles her to the grid system on the ceiling and jumps around on her and rides her like around <laughs> like a tire swing because the grid is actually a rail system. For sweet grinds! Then Christian binds Anna to the rood. And I said that I have no idea what a rood is, but it's actually a cross. So it's like a cross that he ties her to. And then they have sex with both orgasm. At the back of the room and jams it in, which makes Anastasia collapse out of exhaustion and pleasure. Which is dumb. <laughs> uh, right after this, he makes her do the kneel and don't look thing again while he gets supplies for the next thing. So finally, he cable ties her. It makes her brace herself on one of the posts of the bed, and then he leans her over and does that pokey thing that results in a huge soppy mess and like, dude, chill out, calm down, sit on the sofa and watch some TV. Just stop. Stop it, Christian. So Anna collapses or something onto his chest and like, who even fucking knows? Um, he cuts her out of the bonds and she seizes it up. The point is, they had a sex and Christian acted the dom. The behind position, known as the anime position, thanks helmet condenser. <laughs> what? <laughs> I really should have rewritten that part. Oh well. No, it was great. <laughs> yeah, this is why I shouldn't be allowed to write things. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just forget this happened and <laughs> talk about pet theories. We mentioned before that the Red Room might be some kind of time portal, because when she opens the door, she's like, oh my gosh, it's the Spanish Inquisition in here. <laughs> and Christian has her kneel on the floor and look down, and he leaves, and then she says, time shifts, and she can no longer tell how long it's been, how long she's been sitting there. She doesn't know. Time has no meaning anymore. <laughs> so I wondered what happened when he left. Did he like just crank up the time machine knob to a <laughs> hundred? And then I hope that they are now in the future and there are robots. <laughs> <laughs> I think there already are robots. And speaking of robots, there's an unsolved question in this chapter. Anastasia asks, after a fashion, Taylor appears from nowhere to escort her through the double doors and out to the elevator. How does he do that? Where does he lurk? Is he really lurking or is she just like not good at noticing? I just thought maybe like he's got like an earpiece and he can sort of hear everything that's going on at all times so he just knows when to appear to escort someone Whoa. away. But then would, would Christian accept such a thing? I don't know. Maybe. Depends on the maybe. level of trust. I was gonna say, do we ascribe to the robo cupboard that we had 
theorize Of course about. I do. Of course I do. <laughs> All right, so Robo cupboard. <laughs> He's in a little cupboard that looks that's indistinguishable from the wall, and then a little slides up with a little whoosh, <laughs> uh, and he comes out and does his his job. What if you fell in love with Anna's car and they ran away together? That'd be sweet. <laughs> the the beetle. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor has a way with cars. I mean, with all this driving and stuff, you gotta think, maybe there's some love there. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> so in this chapter, right after they're done eating the breakfast, Anastasia is thinking about Christian because Christian's right in front of her talking to her, so it's natural that she'd be thinking about him. But she says, I'm drawn to him on some deep elemental level that I can't begin to understand. Concrete elemental. A concrete yep. elemental <laughs> level. Yes. Yeah. There was some other evidence to support the concrete elemental thing. Like, he's, like, smoothing her buttocks or he's, like, sculpting them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there was that line where he she he smooths and, and shapes her buttocks. Um, <laughs> which is amazing. Like, wow. <laughs> he's the <a> guy. <laughs> on top of being a concrete elemental, he's also got an eye for art. Aesthetics, if you will. Yes, art that we've never heard of again. <laughs> what if he is God and he is making her from dirt? Or concrete, for fashioning her, fashioning her butt. That'd be cool, except she already exists. That's confusing. <laughs> well, he's going back to fix it. He was like, ugh, I made a mistake. <laughs> but it's all unsmooth, it's lumpy. Why did I put that there? <laughs> There's just like polyps everywhere, barnacles. This, 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 this is just all a ruse to get at <laughs> it so that he could, he could perfect the butt. <laughs> And with, with a good excuse for touching it. Well, the other thing was that um, Anna refers to Christian as just sex on legs. And given her usage of the word sex, that could mean anything from him being to her vagina on legs. <laughs> to <laughs> her being her vagina on legs. That's all for me. Okie dokie. Then let's move on to mechanics. So, uh, I will start us off. Christian's mouth drops open in shock, and I cannot keep a straight face any longer and grin at him like an idiot. It's just... it didn't really look right to me. Yeah, too many ands. And I, and I, and I. So I had revised it to read, Christian's mouth drops open in shock, period. I cannot keep a straight face any longer and grin like an idiot. And the comma is, of course, optional. After longer, I uh, I did not put in a comma because I didn't feel like it. So, Chad, do you want to read my, my horrible... Selection. Yep. He steps back and gazes at me, his expression hooded, salacious, carnal, and I am helpless, my hands tied, but just looking at his lovely face, reading his need and longing for me, I can feel the dampness between my legs. Those were eight, what? eight, eight commas, eight commas. Me, his expression hooded, okay. salacious, carnal, and I am helpless, my hands tied, but just looking at his lovely face, le- reading his need and longing for me, I can feel it. It's just very bad. Very, and she does this again. Sentence. Um, okay. So there's more continuing the trend of bad comma stuff. So here we go. Two sentences Whoa. together. Whoa, we train. Uh, uh, sp- <laughs> spooky train. Goodness. Yeah, I like that. Standing in front of me again, comma, he hooks his fingers into my panties, comma, and at a most unhurried pace, comma, peels them down my legs, comma, stripping me agonizingly slowly, comma, so that he ends up kneeling in front of me. Period. Not taking his eyes off mine, comma, he scrunches my panties in his hand, comma, holds them up to his nose, comma, and inhales deeply. Two sentences in a row <laughs> where you don't break your setup. And both those setups suck. Yeah. Except possibly you can argue for the second one being okay, but that first one certainly is not. Charity, do you want to read the next one? But he reaches over me and grabs my braid near the end and winds it round his wrist to my nape, holding my head in place. Uh, there's no commas in this sentence at all. Not a one. She's the ball of her uh, commas <laughs> in the other sentences. Oops. Gotta be careful. I have two sentence fragments. Let's see. Anna is like thinking to herself. And as he stares down at me, the atmosphere between us slowly shifting, evolving, charging. Yep, that's just a sentence fragment. And it comes after a complete sentence, and it's before another complete sentence, so it makes no mm-hmm. sense. Let's see. And then Christian is talking to her, and he says, And your smart mouth, quiet for now. All right, that's pretty bad. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's go to Americans. There were there were in this chapter that I saw in the last chapter, so that's good. Good day and good luck to you, Anna. I mean, like, good day meaning see you later. I don't, I don't think that's really something that Americans say, like, unless we're, unless it's like a, like a really jokey way of saying it, like, yeah, <laughs> imitating a, a British person. <laughs> yeah. I saw a movie when I was younger. It was like one of the first 
British English movies I'd ever seen. It was I don't remember what, which one it was, but it was it was, was like it some Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. No, it was it was like a. <laughs> I said good day. <laughs> I said good day. It was like a crime and mystery or intrigue plot. I want to say it was about bank robbers or something. And at the end of the movie. The plot twist is that, like, the old lady gets to keep all the money, and, like, there's some detective man asking her, but, like, but where did the money go? And she's like, I don't know. Good day. And I was just like, what is, is she being, like, mean? Like, what does that mean? Because I didn't know she meant by. <laughs> hmm. That's it. Christian says that Anna is mighty fine. He says that she looks mighty fine when she's all tied up. <laughs> Actually, and he says, you look mighty fine when you're all trussed up like this. And this is going to be a tangent, because I, all it is is that she's tied, she's in, like, some cuffs hooked to the ceiling i don't know if i would call that trussed up for some reason like when i think of trussed up i think of many more (laughs) bindings like yeah Yeah, you would be like completely tied up i don't think of hanging i think of like trussed up like a thanksgiving turkey (laughs) your little your little drumsticks tied behind your back and your legs as well oh maybe that's what that means actually let's look it up to tie up the wings and legs Hmm. oh all right well that makes sense. But then was she really trussed up? Because she wasn't... Tra- tie up someone with their arms at their sides, which is not what was happening. That was not what was happening. That is just wrong. He also says that she, quote, tastes mighty fine, referring to her <laughs> vagina juices. He uses it twice in two pages, which is really weird, and, like, he's never said that before, and it sounds... Like, I don't think it's British, because I don't think a British person would... Be, or maybe they would. I'm no. not sure. Or else it is that she is just trying too hard to sound American. I mean, it passes the southern accent test, but it doesn't pass, like, the the sanity test. (laughs) Well, I think it's southern English, sort of. uh, Mighty fine. It sounds like something marine in StarCraft Do you mean, when you say southern English, do you mean southern American? Uh, Sorry, sorry, southern Southern American dialect. Oh, okay. That was, I totally... Out yeah. There for a moment. There's a burger chain here called Mighty Fine, so maybe he's just thinking oh. about about burgers. Wow, you taste just <laughs> like a beautiful burg. <laughs> okay, we aim to please Miss Steele, and all I wrote here in my notes is not again, <laughs> because he's already said it a couple times, and you know that you know that I know that he said it a couple times, so I won't talk about it anymore. <laughs> You're shattered, aren't you? Christian uh, says this upon seeing that uh, Anna is quite tired of having sex. And I thought this was weird because it's not something that uh, we would say, I don't think. So either it's British or it's just something where he's just using a word that she's been using. Yeah. When she describes her orgasms as shattering around him. She's never said that aloud. Though, so it's it's weird that he would pick that word, which is something that no one would say. Um, yeah, it almost sounds like a sarcastic thing, like "Oh, you're shattered, aren't you?" Because like the way that you would say it uh, in our dialect, I think, is to say like "Oh, I didn't get into college," and like you know, I was totally shattered. Like nobody would say like "Oh, you didn't get into college, you're shattered, aren't you?" Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's our last one. I guess he's talking about her giggles here. Oh, but when it happens, Miss Steele, tis a wonder and joy to behold. Oh, I mean, I just wrote fuck off because fuck off. Just fuck off. I know a guy who sort of talks like that and it makes me cringe every time. <laughs> I mean, if it was consistent and he was like sort of a nerdy guy, then like I think that would be funny and cute, but it's not. I don't think so. Uh- <laughs> it kind of depends on the person. And uh, yeah. I think most people who try to do it are not meant to do it. All right. Okay. Next. So no, there's no next. The next section is wording. I know. That's what I meant. Okay. Well, wording. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Chad. Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Christian's stance has changed completely. Subtly altered. Harder and meaner. Well, which is it? Did it change completely or was it subtle? Is it subtle or is it flipped? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's weird. So annoying. One minute we're joking, and the next dot dot dot, I fan my heated face. He's just sex on legs. And now I have to recover my equilibrium and eat something. Sex on legs. I've heard this phrase. I know it exists, but Are I you hate guys? it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I've me heard too. It too. Like, it's old timey. <laughs> so do you yep. I think does anybody remember that weird meme where it's just like an anime girl's head and there's legs coming out of her head and that's just like 
Yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, that's what I think of when I think of sex on legs. Just like <laughs> legs and like an unrelated object that isn't a body, just like on those legs. He's just fruit on a beach. <sighs> He's just one tall glass of water. <laughs> A breathtaking aria is playing on the music system, swirling around him, cocooning him, filling the room with the sweet, soulful song. She's like, just calm down. <laughs> I'm sure it's a nice song, but just, I don't, I hate just, this image. He's just sitting on the couch reading. Like, <laughs> it's really stupid. <laughs> like, Anna is, like, she always. It seems like there's only a few times that she talks about music in this book, but every time it's, like, super... You would think that it would be a bigger part of it if it, like, affected her so yeah. heavily that, like, she always... Like, oh, these voices are seducing or cocooning or some shit like that. I mean... I don't know, it's just, um... And it's just very easy to it's impress. It's just over much. Like, I understand that music is, yeah, like, a big it's deal. It's really fucking flowery. <laughs> music is a big deal to a lot of people, but, like... You know, like, when I listen to poli- The Police or whatever, I don't... I don't write about myself and say, like, the dulcet tones of Sting uh, elevate my soul to a higher level as I listen to the depraved situation he describes. Like, I listen to Don't Stand So Close to Me, and I think, yeah, don't stand so close to me. I think I never want, it just, it hardens my resolve that I don't want anyone to touch me. (laughs) I have a hard time listening to music when I'm, like, reading, because I like to concentrate on reading. Yeah, and I'm the same way. I always listen to an instrumental when I'm reading, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could listen to an aria, especially one that's like very bombastic. It would be way too distracting because I'd be like, I want to listen to the aria. Do you remember that like harpsichord music I was listening to, Chad? Yeah. I think yeah, so. like that's the kind of thing I would listen to when I was reading. I could, I'll just I'll just put it in the fucking podcast because it's nice mood music. Uh, yeah. All right, let's now move on. I shall read this. Thing. Yes, you must read um, this. Thing. I am once more in the red room of pain. It's the same, the smell of leather, citrus, polish, and dark wood, all very sensual. My blood is running heated and scared through my system. Adrenaline mixed with lust and longing. It's a heady, potent cocktail. All this, like, sensation, red room, blah, blah. Like, okay, it's nice. I get that she's trying to, you know, put us in the place. And, like, I think that's good. I think that she's, it's good when she's not focusing on, like, Anna's feelings or Christian's gaze. I think... The first sentence is like, okay, but needs editing. And then the second sentence is like, you don't need that. Oh, my blood, blur, so sensual. Like, you kind of have to let the reader- My blood. <laughs> oh, my blood. Saying that it's sensual leather, uh, leather then. What am I saying? Saying that it's sensual lab, lather, <laughs> lather, leather, rather. Saying it's sensual- Red leather, red yellow leather, rather. Red leather, yellow leather. Saying it's sensual rather than letting it stand for itself, letting the reader project onto the sentence. Like, I think that's pretty bad. I appreciate the effort, but you know. I like yep. that she says that her blood is running scared through her system. Yeah, I, I noted that. <laughs> I'm just imagining the blood is just like, oh my god, how do we get out of here? It's, yeah, just, like, yeah. it's just a big circle. <laughs> it's just a big it's circle. It's just one of those action scenes, or like those scenes in an action movie where everyone's running through corridors, like yeah. through doors. Like, how do we get out of here? Where's the exit? <laughs> <laughs> like a Scooby-Doo runaway montage. You are incorrigible, Miss Steele. And it's just it's the biggest cliche. And I mean, I understand that they're probably using it because it is a cliche. But I still hate it. I hate it too. One of the first times that I heard this sentence was in The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest, where Jesse Bannon goes, You are incorrigible, Johnny Quest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's standing behind me, so close that I feel the heat again with the heat, radiating from him, warming me, warming me all over. He pulls my hair so it's all hanging down my back, grasps, <laughs> grasps, grasps a handful at my nape and angles my head to one side. Okay, so the first thing is repetition is annoying and dumb. I think the warming me, warming me all over, I don't think that nobody should do it, but I think that that kind of thing is most effective when your narrating character is going through like a mental break of some kind. If they have like a weapon and they're like the gun, the gun, the gun, and they shoot someone <laughs> with it, like that's that's sort of just how I feel. So there's that. And the second thing is, I mean, just look at this shitty sentence. Again, we have this hair fixation from Christian. Same sentence structures, of course. The nape, hang down my neck, hang down, angles my head. At least this time he's not scooping it. However, do note that he scoops her up, her entire body up later. So she's still reusing words in a way that is annoying. Um, it's only just not painful. 
Like, reading that sentence in the book is hard. Reading it out loud, because you understand what it says, is easy, but, like, it's only just not painful, and there's no, um... It, she, she didn't put, like, a... This is probably more a mechanical thing. There, she didn't put, like, a hyphen between not and painful, so it'd be more like, it's only just not painful, or something like that, but... Okay, so I just wrote now how you read that sentence and you come across it, because I thought about putting this in my notes, but I didn't. It's only dash dash, just not painful. <laughs> yeah. That's how I, but that's how I read it when I You're came right, across but it's, it. And it's supposed to be, it's only just not painful. It's, it just yeah. manages not to be painful. I'm glad to hear everybody <laughs> else had that problem too, because I felt dumb and I didn't put it in the notes, so it's like a momentum killer if you're reading this book and you hit this sentence you just go whoa you have to stop for a minute and go let me read that again that that happens a couple times in this book like especially if you're just skimming like my roommate has been reading uh the book since he has been listening to the podcast every once in a while uh he got like an ebook version (laughs) and we were talking about like reading it and he's like i'm just skimming it hello chat's roommates sorry but like he's mentioned like I because he can skim pretty fast but he's like every once in a while I just hit things like it more often than you'd think too or you just have to stop because of how E.L. James writes like yeah it's it it's so out of the ordinary like either ungrammatical or like she throws in a big word for no reason it's you just have to so go so uh, out of the ordinary <laughs> <laughs> just like Anastasia should she have said it's not painful but only just uh, that be I probably would say too? it falls just short of being painful. Yeah, yeah, I w- yeah, I just wouldn't have written it this colloquially. Yeah. Yeah. Next, it's it's yeah. Okay, I watch as he moves gracefully through the kitchen. He's so at ease with his body on one level, but then he doesn't like to be touched. So maybe deep down he isn't. No man is an island, I muse, except perhaps Christian Grey. But she, <laughs> you just said how he wasn't an island because. He wasn't. Com- he j- she related. She says, "No man." Is- okay. She <laughs> <laughs> actually, yes. Let me help you. What she actually says is that deep down he isn't at ease. Right. No, I know. She doesn't say that deep down he's in an island. No. Look. Listen to me. Okay. She's. <laughs> yeah. No. She's saying that. Like. She's saying like. Oh, he's so cra- graceful and comfortable with himself. But maybe he isn't. But no man is an island. Except maybe he is. Like that's yeah, what she he, says. She's saying. Okay. He's not. Deep down, he's not at ease with his body. That's because no man is an island. But maybe Christian Grey is. Yeah, that does. It doesn't make any sense. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah. See, what happened was I was trying to make sense of that, and so my brain thought, "Oh yeah, this makes it work," and I just ignored uh, <laughs> everything that didn't make it work. So I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So Anastasia describes Christian in her monologue as being like a jungle cat, and like. <laughs> First of all, it's very cliche. I don't know if this cliche is ever good, but I also would like to say I would rather that she named the specific jungle cat that Christian is like. Is he like a puma, like a jaguar, like a tiger, or like a leopard? Didn't she say tiger in some? Or what? She said something in some chapter. We we did a big talk oh, about it. Uh, I, think we, I think tiger. Yeah, when there was butterflies in her stomach. No, there was a, a, someone leopard. prowling around. Something a jaguar or a pan- I think it was a panther. Panther prowling around. Is a panther a? Yes, it's panther, but is a panther a jungle cat? Yes, it is. Okay, so then he's like a panther. Could could she not have just like a beautiful, sleek panther? Like I would have thought that was a little more creative. Did you know? Uh, she's technically. She, I know what she's saying when she says jungle cat. We all do. But jungle cat is speci- is a specific type of of like medium cat, and then also tigers and leopards aren't jungle Actually, cats. Actually, tigers do live in jungles because they live in a lot of places in the world. Yeah, didn't you see the Jungle Book or read it? Because I'm not a child <laughs> who only watched the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. We've all seen that, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. sure <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. all seen that factual um, account of how animals interact in the jungle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who could forget? Uh, okay, so there's uh, just a lot of really terrible repetition. Charles pointed out some of it earlier, just uh, within like that one sentence. But some words that she has used previously, and she uses, she exhausts in this chapter, uh, glorious slash gloriously, uh, because she just she loves that word. It's her favorite word about the sexiness stuff. Yeah, she uses it twice in this chapter, at least. Glorious. And then shatter, shattering. This happens quite a lot again. And then 
Anastasia has deep problems with like being around Christian. He's intoxicating, intoxicating and also inebriating, and this happens. Inebriating. She says this several times throughout the book. And then there's the warming and the heating. Um, there's, I suppose Anastasia can cut down significantly on her heating bills by just hanging around Christian. <laughs> That's a good idea. But then again, if she's getting, if she's inebriated by Christian, is she actually warmer, or is you know her blood vessels dilating? Yeah, maybe yeah, it's just. Maybe. I think it is her blood vessels dilating. Because is that not? I was actually going to ask if maybe that's like a, a sexual response for your blood vessels to dilate, but I don't know if they can Some track of them. Like that. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The ones in the penis. Just the one. <laughs> the one cluster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But, but however, you also get like goosebumps and stuff, which I don't think is associated with uh, increased blood vessel. In- increased blood vessel. Just increased, just increased blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anna puts on a gray waffle robe. Um, this is apparently a thing, a certain sort of fabric. But I think we, I think we're all thinking about a robe made of waffles. <laughs> I actually have to say, I am that I was about. I almost put this sentence in what was good because I, I, I totally understand what she's talking about when she says gray waffle robe. But it also, um, it also evokes waffles. So, uh, just a good sentence. I just overall. don't. I don't wear robes. So, I mean, that's a good reason to put it in what's good. Waffles, <laughs> yeah. man. Waffles, man. <laughs> oh man, I want some waffles. Wow, I want some chicken and waffles. Me too. I've never had that. It's good. I would like to. Yeah. All right. So, Chad, will you read my next thing? Uh, yes. It hits me, underneath my behind, against my sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way that it's written out in the book is okay between behind and against. There's a dot dot dot. So the, it's overly dramatic delivery, and it kind of made me laugh. W- like, what did you think was going to happen? And then I sort of was thinking to myself, like, why doesn't she just say the word like for the genital? But it turns out that later in the chapter she does, and in fact, in the same exact situation, she does. What does she say? The clit or I... yeah, she says she says both. Wait, she says vagina. She says clitoris, and then oh, she okay. says vagina. Wait, she says vagina? Yeah. Whoa! I'll yeah. read it to you. Okay. Vagina. Please. Turns out there's a lot of vaginas in this book. Really? Uh, okay. okay, here we go. <laughs> I did not expect this to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect this to be like this. I am lost. Lost in a sea of sensation. And suddenly, he's dragging the crop against my sex through my pubic hair down to the entrance of my vagina. Oh, that's right. All right. Okay. There you go. I feel a quickening. Uh, I think she's used this before. Yeah, she has. And we've pointed it out, but I just want to say so much for birth control. <laughs> yeah, we pointed it out specifically <laughs> yeah. because that tends to mean that a lady's pregnant. Yeah. Um, Chad's turn. I hope Anna doesn't get confused about the pills and just like, <laughs> rather than taking them, she just like inserts them. Oh my God. It's not a suppository. <laughs> Surely that would still work. No. Maybe? No. No. Oh. It would, well, maybe it depends on your birth control, might. but I would say no. I mean, if the coated sugar, I mean, it would maybe still not. Get absorbed. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it would break down quickly enough, though. It might just rot. <laughs> rot? Well, don't things break down oh. more quickly? Uh, I think in the butt, not in the bag. It depends. It depends on the acidity level. That's true. If it's not designed to be absorbed immediately, and if they're like covered coated in sugar, then probably not. Right. It has to be broken yeah. down by stomach acid as well. That's right. A thing. Okay. Next. Please. Next. Chat's turn. Who could have thought it would be so exhausting? Uh, this is what Anastasia says at the conclusion of, I think, either all or one of the sex. It's like, well, you had you had sex. What do you expect? You were tied up, too. <laughs> like, you did a bunch of physical activity, so you're tired. And this isn't new. You've been tired before yeah, by sex. Yeah, she, like, falls asleep <laughs> all the time. This happens every you time you have sex. Anastasia. Also, you're out of shape. You admit you're out of shape. Maybe this is supposed to be, like she's experiencing subspace and so she feels so worn out because it's like an emotional drain maybe i don't know i think you're probably she right of, but it's not how it comes across she sort of gives indications that she may in fact be in subspace like some of the things yeah. that she does we'll, we'll talk about it in media some talk probably she's walking around she find uh <laughs> sorry i was thinking of hammer i keep every time you, I, I hate it i hate to do it because i'm not trying to make fun of like submissives but whenever you say subspace, it just makes me think of hammer space. <laughs> I think this is perfectly fine, and I think we'll leave it in the podcast. He, talk, he talks about, okay, Christian says, now to peel you out of that dress, or something like that. And I just hate this 
repetition of this phrase. He used it back when she first appeared in the same dress at dinner. And I kind of think that maybe... I have a theory about why she keeps using this this phrase. It's that that's like people when they were reading the fan fiction were like, Oh my god, that's so sexy. He wants to peel her out of the dress. Uh. <laughs> and so... <laughs> She was like, hmm, people like that. I better keep putting it in there. Better keep putting it on. That's, it. That's interesting. My theory is that E.L. James has never not worn clothing. <laughs> like, she just she came out in a dress, and she's just always been in a dress. So she's not exactly sure what happens <laughs> when you take off your clothes. They couldn't simply just, you know, come off or be removed. They just, they, you have to peel. They're like a second skin. <laughs> Almost like a vegetable. Or like an actual skin. Or like a snake. A snake or a vegetable. <laughs> I, don't, I don't usually peel snakes. Um, you're not, uh, you know, if you're not peeling snakes, you're not living. <laughs> oh. I, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's another thing. He hits me again across the buttocks. The crop stings this time. I mean, like, it, it stung the last time, too. Not even a couple sentences ago. Here's what you said. My body convulses at this sweet stinging bite. Like, just, <laughs> just get it straight. It stings this time. It stings every time. He's not changing anything. It stings. Maybe Christian's a bee. <laughs> Christian Maybe. is a bee. Or he just like has bees for hands. <laughs> it's not actually a riding crop in his hands. It's actually um, just Anas- a st- Anastasia is just. It's like, actually just a stream just of just bees. Like, yeah, she's like dissociating, <laughs> so she's just seeing bees, and they're just like, or no, she's not seeing the bees, which are shooting out of Christian. <laughs> Bees. And so, like, when he puts the crop in her mouth, he's like, see how you taste, and it's just like a bunch of bees getting shoved in her mouth. <laughs> Vaginal bees. Oh, my God. No. No. <laughs> There's a line that I had picked out, uh, and I would like Chad to read it. See how you taste. Suck. Suck hard, baby. <laughs> I don't think we need to explain why I put this in wording. And it's not because of that. I, it's not because I think it's good. It's because I think it's very bad. <laughs> It is terrible. I feel like he said this exact same sentence when he was doing the exact same thing, but with his his thumb. He did it with his thumb. Yeah. He, yeah, he goes, see how you taste. Suck. Suck hard, baby. He says this exact line to her, I think. I think. I mean, it's it's very close, if not if not. I think exact. the only difference is that he doesn't say suck with a period. He just says, see how you taste. Suck hard, baby. She says herself, I suck hard. <laughs> um, That's I right. I think this is just a repetition of the fact that she you know just as a person she sucks and he's saying like suck harder try to get worse i'm looking back <laughs> for this and all i'm saying is feel it baby that's right baby <laughs> shake it baby <laughs> uh, that's all i think about i just hear duke nukem <laughs> it is a bit duke nukemish ish the thick of it okay anyways yep. here's a sentence lift your legs baby wrap them round me so here we have the return of round and there's no apostrophe it's just round and i'm sure it's different yeah, in your books an American. yeah i'm sure it um, is again but uh, actually i think it's the same really but i don't remember yeah i, I don't remember exactly because we we ascertained last time that she had changed it to around in the edit stage you too so fine Get some chest, close to me, close your eyes, lift your legs, baby, wrap them around me. There you have oh, it. Oh, okay. So, again, something that was changed, but whatever. Charity, you want to read my line that I picked? So Anastasia's really ty- tired, she doesn't feel like having sex anymore, and she, she thinks, will he let me sleep, perchance to dream? <laughs> and this is, of course, from Hamlet. It is from Hamlet. Go ahead. Okay, well, Hamlet is saying this when he's talking about death. It's, it's, uh, alas, poor, poor York. I knew him. And then he's saying, like... Wait, is it? Yes, it is. All right. I want to bring, I want to bring it up. Oh, okay. I mean, that's also part of the to be or not to be speech, right? Yeah, that's to be or not to be, is when he says, alas, poor York, and then he goes, oh, to be or not to be. That's the question. Oh, I didn't realize this was the same a thousand speech. blah, blah, blahs to blah, 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 oh, okay. blah, blah. Wait, I'll read the whole thing. To die to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come, when we have shuffled up this mortal coil, must give us pause, there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. I mean, yeah, she just, she just wants to die. I know. She's like, oh, just let me die. I'm tired of sex. <laughs> uh, she does, like, laugh at herself. Maybe that's why she she's like, haha, that was a stupid thing to think. She's like, haha, my, 
my English major is finally paying off. I mean, off. that would that would just sober <laughs> me. Like, what am I, what am I thinking? Like, why am I, why am I in this <laughs> stupid book? So now it's time for situational. First thing I like to talk about is Dr. Green, and I'll, I've just noticed that green is a color. <clears throat> so you have Dr. Green and Dr. Gray. She's wearing a blue dress. Here's the quote. Yes, Mr. Gray, look after her. She's a beautiful, bright young woman. Christian is taken aback, as am I. What an inappropriate thing for a doctor to say. Is she giving him some kind of not-so-subtle warning? Christian recovers himself. I mean, it kind of depends on why Anastasia thinks it's inappropriate, but I feel like it's a pretty typical thing for, like, a an older person to say to a younger man dating you. Hmm. I thought that was inappropriate, too. I thought so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So I was surprised when Anastasia called it out as inappropriate because I was like, whoa, that's a fucked up thing to say to somebody. Like, Yeah, but it only kind of depends on why you think it is inappropriate. Because she's a doctor. Well, because she's a doctor and it's none of her business. <laughs> like, she's, and she's also telling okay. Christian, like, take care of the woman. Like, And, like, I don't think they know each other since she's a gynecologist. Right. He's he just, like, it yeah. sounds like he just found the best gynecologist in the city. They've never met before. Really? And she... Yeah. It sort of sounds like they have met before, though. Yeah, it's, I sort of think There's so, too. a bit too. of familiarity. Maybe. But I don't think it's, like, a familiarity to where she'd be like, keep this one under, like, keep this one on a chain. The way that I read this is perhaps <laughs> that uh-huh. she's, like, a friend of his mom's or something, because his mom is a doctor. Oh, that that's probably true. Okay. Anyways, I will comment and say, like, you guys are both offended for the reason that you should be. However, I think that <laughs> Anastasia is thinking it's inappropriate because she's she compliments her and says she's a beautiful, bright young woman. That's sort of how I read it. I don't think so. Like, she thinks it's not appropriate because it's not correct? Sort of, yeah. Like, like, oh, mm. like, how come she's saying something so personal? Like, she doesn't even know me. Like, I suck. <laughs> hard. I suck hard. I really don't think that's how she's, she's I don't saying think it. So. I think it's just that, like, a doctor is saying, like, I mean, like, how many times have you been to a doctor where, like, the doctor is, tells his, this other person, like, kind of want to keep fucking this one. <laughs> I don't. I don't take other people to the doctor with me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, Cherry, do you want to read your thing? So they make mention several times about how about how Christian is making it worth Doctor Green's while to make a house call on a Sunday, and also she says that she's being paid a small fortune to be here. So I was wondering, how much do you guys think Christian's paying Doctor Green? I'd say seven thousand dollars minimum. I was gonna say five thousand minimum. Hmm. Like per hour? Oh, I don't think it was gonna. No, I don't think it's per hour. Do you think it took an hour? I don't think so. Uh, well, I've never been to a gynecologist, so I can't say. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure you can. Just think of it as a doctor's visit, because that's what it is. Yeah. Well, I've never been to the doctor, so I can't say. <sighs> she just says <laughs> that right. it's a thorough examination and lengthy discussion, so she doesn't give a time. Yeah. So maybe like thirty but, minutes, forty-five minutes. I don't know. Probably something like that. Um. But I mean, like, what would be, like, what? Would I would say upwards of ten thousand um, dollars, especially mm, wow. considering the time frame that she's giving. Yeah. Or he, he gives, which is Sunday afternoon at lunch, so or yeah. Sunday, Sunday at noon. Hmm. Enough to make it worth your while. In other words. Yeah, I mean, he can afford it. <laughs> yeah, so he can he probably just throw. I don't money. know. I'm. How much would you go make a house call? I mean, if you were a doctor, I guess your prior priorities would be different. But I'd go for like a hundred dollars. Depend on the patient. I actually would just call social services instead, <laughs> because okay, if a man calls me and says I need you to check out my girlfriend in my house, like that kind of sounds a little weird. Like, why isn't he letting hmm. her go out and do it herself? I just want to make her wait in line in a waiting room. Yeah, but that's too controlling like to me that sounds like maybe quasi-abusive relationship if i was a doctor maybe but if you were a doctor to an incredibly rich person who just wanted a house call dr charles yeah. <laughs> like because i mean that's that's sort of the that's sort of the that's sort of the purview of the rich is chat. that they get doctors chat. to come out and chat. do shit for chat. them chat chat i'll have like, you know i'm highly principled and i wouldn't just bow to rich people as a doctor you know, okay there's an entire show that they made that was on i think what was it usa Royal about, Pains? Yeah, about, her, about a rich person doctor who just makes house calls. I can't believe I know the name of that show. It's just because my dad watched it all the time for some reason. Let us move on. Here's a quote. So Anastasia makes some joke like, um, she told me I can't have sex for four weeks. And Christian's like, oh no. And then she's like, just. No, she goes, gotcha. Like, just kidding. And then right after this, he narrows his eyes. And I immediately stop laughing. In fact, he looks rather forbidding. Oh, shit. My subconscious quails in the corner as all the blood drains from my face, and I imagine him putting me across his knee again. Gotcha, he says and smirks. Like, that is not funny. Yeah, that's not funny. That's not funny at all. That is really yeah. scary. 
Later in the yeah. night, Anastasia is taken by men in masks and thrown into the back of a van, sped off to a dark... Uh, a cave. Dark, a dark uh, cave. A dark corner, like, above the Puget Sound. Men with AK-47s menace her, and then at the end... They don't take off their masks, revealing they're all Christian Grey. Gotcha, they all say it unison <laughs> before disappearing into a poof. That's funny. But this situation is not, because she's obviously afraid of him and what he'll do to her, and I'm not I'm not okay with well, that. Well, okay, but he is afraid of her of her not having sex with him. <laughs> he is so no, afraid. No, it's fine. It's I mean, you know, obviously you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander <laughs> other way around i guess what's good for yeah. the gander is good for the goose yeah well you know christian is like a female ferret if he doesn't have sex he will die so he was very Whoa. he was very threatened by that it's true look it up okay i believe you all right next christian does Wait. not sorry go ahead Can christian does not <laughs> god go ahead no you go ahead <laughs> no it's fine I didn't since I didn't put any of my notes in the doc. I just like I have like one thing I was gonna talk about, but I'll do yeah. It well, here. maybe you should put your, your notes in yeah, the doc maybe. next time, yeah, huh? Maybe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, <laughs> go ahead. This would be a better reaction if I were in person because I look so sad. But um, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> El James is that thing again where she talks about the food that they're eating and like mm-hmm. like she describes the chicken Caesar salad sort of, and then also she describes the wine, and I think that's dumb. The end. <laughs> Why is it dumb? Well, nobody gives a shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like seriously, d- does anybody who's reading the book really care what actually, the food is like? Actually, I would argue that a hallmark of good writing is that you give details like that, so you can. I've heard that a hallmark that you should never describe food when you're writing because you'll just make everybody hungry. Oh, that's interesting. I was gonna say like, I mean, I just think of Harry Potter, <laughs> of course, and um. Like, after the Dementor comes in the train, and then they give him the chocolate, and he describes eating the chocolate. Well, that's, like, an important plot... Not a plot point, yeah. but that's, like, a very important but detail, I If Anastasia was, like, really hungry, and Christian was like, here, have this food, and she was like, oh, it's the most delicious salad I ever ate, and it was, like, you know, detailed in a cool way, <laughs> then... I wish she well, had said it just like that. <laughs> this is the most delicious salad I've ever ate. Uh, okay, I, my opinion is that it depends, like, entirely on how and, like, what sort of style you know, you're writing. I think I agree with you. I changed my answer. And maybe it depends on the genre as well. Because, like, with erotica, unless the food is sexy, I don't think you want to bring it up, especially. I mean, wine is sexy, but salads aren't sexy. My gripe here is just that she took just, like, even the tiniest paragraph out to just say, like, the chicken Caesar is delicious. To my surprise, I'm famished. And for the first time since I've been with him, I finished my meal before he does. That 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 is more of an important detail. Yeah, that's but cool. But the wine is crisp, clean, and fruity. Like, nobody gives a shit about what the... Like, nobody cares about your dumb shit wine anymore. Like, oh, I'm glad that the Caesar salad was good, and also that the wine was crisp and fruity. Okay. Well, um, okay, the wine, I just think, yes. like, in the context of... Especially in the context of this book, where she chooses to describe the silliest things, and usually they're not the things you'd be interested in hearing about. It's just... It's another, like mark against her i'm sorry no don't be sorry that was important to talk about yeah i'm sorry for interrupting you cherry <laughs> oh no that's okay christian does not trust her to take the pill every day let me read the exact passage here mini pill man and you will remember to take it regularly at the right time every day geez of course i will how does he know i blush at the thought probably from one or more of the 15 I'm sure you'll remind me, I murmured dryly. He glanced at me with amused condescension. I'll put an alarm on my calendar, he smirks. Eat. I can't tell if he's serious or not about this calendar. I mean, she can put one on her Blackberry, maybe, unless she's only going to use it for email, as as we discussed in the last chapter. She'll probably have to get, like, a a PDA to put her birth control in my new electronic device. Of course. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and so it's just really shitty of him to be like... Oh, you're such a fucking ditz and a dumb idiot. You're not going to remember. Yeah, it's rude. I mean, she is a dumb ditz and idiot, but he doesn't need to, yeah. like, enable that. I mean, I guess I guess it's good for him to not just put it all on her as, you sure, know, like, sometimes a problem with birth control and to take some part in it. Yeah. Okay. I do agree with that, but it's just like... You know, maybe part of the reason she's so dumb is that everybody else is, like, doing things for her constantly. So maybe he should just <laughs> let her do something for once and, you know, accept the consequences of not taking the pill. Whether it's taking the morning after pill, getting an abortion, or having a baby. <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah. Christian says, 
one of the reasons people like me do this is because we either like to give or receive pain. It's very simple. You don't. So I spent a great deal of time yesterday thinking about that. Like, all right, yeah, that sounds good. Like, Christian was thinking about things. Like, very good. Very good. And I, I wonder if he's gonna... I wonder if this is gonna make them start to have a healthy relationship. So Anastasia says, Did you reach any conclusions, I whisper? No. And right now, I just want to tie you up and fuck you senseless. Are you ready for that? <laughs> like, <laughs> so much for that, I guess. <laughs> like, I thought about my actions, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> I was listening to the aria that she mentioned earlier that was playing in Cocooning Christian yeah, Lobos. and uh, while I was reading this and when I got to that part it was like a very menacing foreboding part of the aria and it was uh, spooky. I thought this would be a good time to bring up the aria since I like my opera chat. Uh, it's from, it's an aria from Bacchiana's Brasileras. I'm not saying that right, it's okay. The aria is called Via Lobos. This is not jokey m mood music. I, th I almost kind of think it sounds a little bit like pre avant garde ish, sort of like the atonality Russians. <laughs> I don't know what you call them, but basically there's like this kind of weird Prokofiev y. Yeah. I was surprised by the choice. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's good, but it's just like. But it was it was very yeah very strange choice. Not mood appropriate for sure. So all the non Anna female characters seem to be tall, blonde, and beautiful. There's the mom. Mm -hmm. There's all the secretaries. Mm -hmm. There's the doctor. The waiter. Green, uh, from the uh, the waiter. The weird restaurant. Maybe the hipster I restaurant. Um, was she blonde? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, I think her his sister might be blonde. And Kate. Is also blonde. She's a yes. She's a blonde variety. She's like a strawberry blonde, but uh... she, she's a mutant blonde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's just uh, very much, I guess, sort of trying to you know make Anna seem so much different, and she's just this mousy little girl <laughs> in this big blonde world. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt when I went to Sweden. <laughs> That's how I feel every day. Every day. Although, not, um, not a well, I do too, girl. so I'm right there with you. Especially in Sweden. Alright, so Anastasia narrates, Pulling my hair behind me, to my surprise, he starts braiding in one large braid, his fingers fast and deft. He ties it with an unseen hair tie when he's finished, and gives it a quick tug so I'm forced back against him. This is when they're about to have sex in the red room. So a couple things here. If Christian is not into rope play, uh, what's up with the uh, braiding? I mean... The easy answer, of course, is that it's just an extension of control, but, you know, to me, this sounds like the kind of thing that somebody who liked rope play would be doing. Why? Because they're into, like, uh, pretty patterns that you can do with uh, rope. I think he just wants to pull it Ooh. and direct her head around okay. with it. But he could easily yeah, do that it's... if it's loose, too, and it would probably hurt more, which he's into. Yeah. yeah. There is a thing I... There's, like, a... I don't probably shouldn't even mention it because I have no info about it but there's like this really cool hair thing you can do like with a with like a piece of rope and you just like loop it around a certain way and you just have their hair tied oh cool forget it I would really yeah I'll I'll look around I'll look around and put a <laughs> link in the description okay maybe yeah okay so the last thing about the sentence is unseen hair tie like I get what that means but where did he find such a legendary object such as the invisible hair tie did he did he mm. bribe a wizard <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't know, he probably just owns a bunch of wizards. Um, <laughs> I think what happens here is that Anastasia is a bit confused, though. She's getting a little mixed up. It's not the hair tie that's unseen, it's her, because this is the one hair tie. And so, now she's invisible. <laughs> oh, now I understand. I, f I found the hair bondage thing. It's, uh, it's Twisted Monk Studios, who do lots of bondage videos. Uh, yeah. Does Chad have good. anything for this? Not section? Really. I didn't really have we'll read that. notes. Read this. Um, okay. read this right here. It's read my this. fault, because one, I did my notes late. I don't care about your excuses. Because, um, <laughs> read the thing. do the thing. He patiently dresses me, as if I'm a small child. I made you read this because you've often complained about this. Uh, again, with the small child comparison, you know, she does a lot of childish things. Giggling. <laughs> it's just like, you know, stop infantilizing her so much when you're not blatantly about that as a sexual fetish. And like, just above, where Christian's pretending they're at a sleepover, Braiding your hair, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. My only quote is this. Yes, sir. Um, I'll link the article, and in fact, I have, and I have a quote from it. There's a 
thing that some people think that doms should not immediately ask or expect to be called sir. I tend to agree with that because of the following passage, which I will read to you. Many new submissives think they have no say in what will happen to them, and for some reason they think they should be addressing anyone who calls himself a dom as sir. Simply put, this is hogwash. <laughs> Don't address any dom as sir unless you feel he deserves such protocol. An experienced dom won't expect you to address him, capital him, as sir. Such doms are... What if it's a fucking woman? Yeah, what that too? What if that too? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since it's capitalized, I'm guessing that they're just referring to him, the Powerpuff Girls villain. Him. Such doms are su too self-confident and respectful of submissives, in my opinion. So you get all worked up about having every submissive they meet address them as sir. And she's, of course, referring to, like, the cool doms or whatever. What do we think about that? And by we, I mean charity mostly. I want to know what you think about that. I kind of agree a little bit. I mean, definitely if you're, you know, doing... I mean, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, contracts and shit, but there's sometimes when you just meet someone at a party and you immediately play with them, and you don't have time to, like, sort that stuff out, and you might just be like, okay, call me, uh, miss or whatever, and if you don't, I'll, I'll be mad and assert my authority, uh, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, if you're not cool with it, you just say no. Yeah. Yeah, I sort I guess I sort of agree, uh, um... Okay, like if you if you're not in a scene, then definitely yes. Don't feel obligated to call them sir if you haven't specified that you should be calling yeah. them that the whole time. Uh, you know, if you're just like meeting them at a at a at what they call a munch, which is just where yeah. BDSM people hang out outside of BDSM right, just to setting. get the, into the uh, community. Exactly, you wouldn't necessarily need to call anyone sir unless they're really strict place like some are um i was going to say it all seems to me that it should be up to the sub like hey should i be calling you anything and then the dom's like hey yeah yeah i mean that's that's the question that gets asked a lot usually just because the sub is so eager to call to call you something yeah all right then my ending thought on this is that i kind of think that some trust should be built for first or you should just you know as cherry doom said be in a scene and consent to it sort of like de facto, whatever that even means. Uh, this is under Kate chat, but it's really not that Kate chatty as they're doing some stuff, the BDSM stuff. Anastasia narrates, I oblige immediately feeling like I'm exiting my body, a casual observer of events as they unfold around me. This is beyond fascinating, beyond erotic. It's singularly, that's kind of British, the most exciting and scary thing I've ever done. I'm entrusting myself to a beautiful man who, by his own admission, is 50 shades fucked up. I suppress the brief thrill of fear. Kate and Elliot, they know I'm here! <laughs> Alright, this kind of didn't make sense to me. Like, first off, exiting my body is kind of like a dissociative thing, so one would think that she's either in subspace or traumatized. And then, but yeah, like she's totally into it, so I don't know. And I don't, I most of all do not understand the sudden mention of Kate and Elliot. She, she's afraid that she's gonna die, but it's okay because Kate and Elliot, at least someone oh, knows is that, that she's what that here. Is? She won't like, she, yeah, yeah, she won't just like totally disappear off the Whoa, face of the Whoa, that's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, because she's like, I'm I'm a little bit scared, but at least Kate and Elliot know I'm here. She's reassuring herself that I way. I feel like that almost needs to be my safe yeah. word, like dissociating out of a situation. <laughs> Am I going to die? Uh, I guess my friends can find my dead body. Like, <sighs> that's terrible. Yeah. I'm upset. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I left that proper trail of clues and an actual map back at the apartment. They'll figure it out. Uh, I, like, I wonder. Did she was she just like it'll be too late <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> by the time they they like realize that she hasn't been back for a few days and they will realize that oh she's not just staying over because she's loving that sex so much she's probably <laughs> dead so I guess the only thing that she's like relieved about is that Christian will be put to justice because they know that she that that was the last place she was at and so they'll they'll pursue justice <laughs> i suppose but it's good that we unpacked that because i didn't understand now it's time for a special segment the segment is bdsm chat yeah because some of it happens yeah, in this chapter a lot of it several things okay so the return of the cable ties christian just he puts the cable ties on her and then they're just in front of her and makes her hold on to the bed as we said in like the second episode maybe the third i think it was the second one 
it just don't use cable ties. They're terrible. Uh, Christian has scissors to cut her out of them, but uh, like I said before, the tie could be pulled so tight that injury is very possible when you're trying to get the bottom of the scissors under the under in, under the, yeah. the tie so you can cut it off. And since they only go one way, they can only tighten and become worse uh, until you can yes. cut them off. Also, apparently, he just has the scissors on him. Like, just yep. he's like, here, I have these scissors. Uh, don't worry. Now let's go over no, to the no, bed. No, no. And now he's fucking her. And then, then she like blacks out and wakes up on top of him. And he still has the scissors. Uh, I mean, this is really unsafe. But they're probably just like in his back pocket, back jeans pocket. That's what I'm saying. It's really unsafe. I thought you were just like the continuity <laughs> of the scissors doesn't make sense. Like you just thought he had them in his hand the no. whole time. No, no, she was saying that it's really unsafe. Like fell back on his butt on the scissors. But it's about cut, cut. I think that he grabbed her when she started going, and then he just like sat on the floor. Sat yeah, because he was also yeah. Maybe. It's just like, well, where do I go now? <laughs> Can't put her on the bed. Oh, and also in this part, she likes she's uh, he's like remember these or something like that, and she's like, oh, they're the cable ties he bought from Clayton's. <laughs> By the way, about this cable tie stuff, just so it doesn't get just so I don't forget to mention it, I think that he just gets the cable ties because they are dangerous, and that turns him on. That was sort of our thinking oh. when, when me and Helmut Knudsen read this chapter, that he's just Maybe, like that big of a but sadist. I think he would explain that or something. I feel like if if E.L. James doesn't explain that explicitly, then that's not what she's thinking. That's nuts. That's so unsafe. All right. I know. I mean, she probably just doesn't yeah, know. It's depressing. They were, there are kind of a, a thing, like, like people think, oh, it's, you know, quick and easy. Just put them on and you bound. I feel my anger feelings rising because... I've had to deal with something <laughs> like this in real life. Like, if you don't, if you want something, E.L. James, if you want BDSM and you don't do any fucking research, how are you going to expect somebody to, like, do it with you? I just... Yeah. <laughs> it makes me so mad. So, in the fanfic, um, and so, like, and Anna's like, oh, my God, it's, it, everything makes sense now. That's why he's buying the cable tie. I thought she'd already made this connection, but I guess not. Anyway... In the fan fiction, because in that in that version of the story, uh, Bella works at a hiking store, and he doesn't buy cable ties. He buys like some jeans or ropes. He buys like nothing involved with bondage at all. And so in that in that one, she he still uses the cable ties in the scene, but she doesn't make the connection because she never bought them in front of her. So that was interesting that she like wanted to use these cable ties it's probably related to something that was that is either her fantasy or that she did in real life that's my thing yeah um next anna jokes that she won't be able to do any sexual activity for four weeks and at first i was like oh interesting maybe they'll do like not pnv stuff yeah not pnv stuff like maybe they'll explore all of a bunch of other different things like you know just ser- just uh, basic service or you know all kinds of there's all kinds yeah. of sex that you could do without putting the P in the V but of course it was just a joke and so they could just keep on P and V and <sighs> they could have done all kinds like they could have done like wax mm-hmm. play or, or like tease and denial that's like a perfect setup tease and denial I, well I don't know actually like what counts as sexual activity exactly I mean what like, why wouldn't she... Because of... I guess it was just because yeah, she might yeah, get yeah, pregnant, yeah. right? But, yeah. Um, I mean, they do have condoms. Or um, maybe it's just, like, she can't have anything in that vagina. Or she can't even, like, get aroused or something. Because it'll fuck with her hormones. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, it's, it was a joke, so none of yeah. it's true. But just, like... She's already, like, nine months pregnant. <laughs> It would have been really cool if they had just done non-sexual stuff, and it would have been like a huge build-up. Like they wouldn't be able to have sex. They'd be like, you know, so horny mm-hmm. for each other. It'd be a, a really good sexual yeah. tension builder. But you know, just they Damn, fuck all the time. I agree completely with you, and I think that's a really great observation. <laughs> uh, it would have been way yeah. more interesting, but uh, not to be. The image of the c- ceiling grid setup is kind of cool, but also sounds kind of silly. Like Chad had said in the or had written in the summary of christian like swinging around like a tire <laughs> swing on her because C- it's sort of like like sometimes on playgrounds there's like a ring and you can like slide it along this yeah this bar yeah yeah to the other end it's like that but like they also sometimes just have like rope zip lines that you hang from that's sort of what i was yeah. thinking of too um, yeah and it's just it's just a very strange setup like very expensive i'm sure like to just set like i can't figure if like he, it's just like so that he can 
take a person around to all these different stations Mm -hmm. without having to untie them. Sort of just sounds like he's super lazy and doesn't want to keep untying and tying her. But I mean, I guess if you can afford it, why not? But it does sound like it might be kind of fun to zoom around the room to the different pain stations. (laughs) Pain (laughs) stations. Like the cross and the bed or whatever. Let's take a tour, Christian says to all of his prospective mm-hmm. submissives, and then they jump on they jump on the rope hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Here's the St. Andrew's cross. All right, over here. <laughs> uh, my inner goddess is spinning like a world class ballerina, pirouette after pirouette, pirouettes. It is pirouette. pirouette. Sorry. Um. Okay, I actually had a comment about this, even though you wrote it in, which was that the amount of training to become like a world, even just like a world class ba- ballerina, not even a world class ballerina, but just like one, is an astronomical amount of training. Well, I mean, we don't know what the inner goddess has been doing before she just suddenly Either showed way. up. When Christian kissed her, maybe she's been practicing ballet this whole time. We don't know how old she is. She could be an. I mean, as a goddess, isn't she sort of timeless or eternal? Yeah. Doesn't she have infinite time to practice? She can probably her? just morph into a ballerina like Zeus can morph into the best cow a world class cow this is also sort of another thing that ties into like godliness Uh, I don't mean to get too metaphysical here but they sort of uh, if you're taking a sort of like omnipotent sort of perspective with like the Christian god then they sort of exist at all points in time like the Mm -hmm. Trophimidorians like there's no there's no reason for them to be linear so I mean the goddess could already be at the end point of 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 her like training eschatological issues of Western religions, isn't it? That you time is linear, but a god is supposed to be eternal. But if it's linear time, whatever. I'm not. I I, I can't talk about this right now. I'm sorry. I'm on spring break. But um, <laughs> sorry. Spring break. Record a podcast. Woo. Nonetheless, <laughs> nevertheless, she is uh giving evidence of her godliness. You know, it's like a it's a display of power. Is what I'm trying to say. A power in godliness. Okay. Uh, I see. I thought you were just saying it's unrealistic for this fake fiction, this <laughs> fictional being to. Yeah, that's sort of what it sounded like. <laughs> we should have like, let you finish. When would the goddess have time for this? <laughs> oh. No, but the fact that she can do it means that she has a fearsome talent, is what I'm trying to say. My inner goddess has a do not disturb sign on the outside of her room. Um, I want to know about, like, more about the floor plan of Anastasia's uh, brain. Like, because she's got a couch in there that the subconscious can hide behind, and there's, like, a room for... Yeah the inner goddess to sleep in and put a do not disturb sign i still like the idea that they're the, the subconscious and the inner goddess are wacky roommates <laughs> I, I i i made a note about this too i was like whoa she has her own room i sort of think it's just like a barren <laughs> concrete room <laughs> so barren concrete gray why don't we make it a uh, gray waffle bathroom gray oh, oh nice <laughs> yeah yeah Let's do my, that. my runner-up for this was um nearly black swan gray <laughs> but I, yeah <laughs> I think we ought to go with the bathroom. Gray waffle bathroom. Yep. Gray waffle bathroom. Gray. Are we lowering it or raising it? Slightly raised. Elevated. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty yeah, low. Last, last time was just a normal threat level, but I think now we can tell. The goddess saw so much activity this chapter that she uh, she could be back with a vengeance. Okay, favorite line. This grid is designed so the shackles move across the grid. This grid is designed so the shackles move across the grid. The grid, the grid, the grid. The grid, the grid. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. F that. It's not my favorite line. This is, I declare this Anna open, says Christian. Right. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of thought it was really <laughs> yeah. dorky. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it is, but I thought it was kind of funny. funny. And he does this when he's cutting the, the tie off as if he's the mayor cutting a ribbon. I declare this Anna open. Or, you know, like someone opening a supermarket. I mean, yeah. But... <laughs> this is what I thought of. Not like a city opening. <laughs> My favorite line is, you have such a captivating, sexy ass, Anastasia Steele. Yeah, that line is hilarious. <laughs> uh, did you have one, Chad? Uh, mine, mine is also, I declare this Anna open. Okay, so what was good? Well, I'll tell you what I think was good. There is, in fact, consensual sex in here, even though Anastasia is scared. Say, say what you want. Get all philosophical about it. I don't care. But she does give spoken consent. Here we yep. go. Christian says about whether he thought about it. <laughs> No. And right now, I just want to try over fucking shackles. Are you ready for that, he says? Yes, she says. So, assuming she isn't lying, she consents. Um, she does seem to go on and, and to enjoy it, and she doesn't have a big crying fit afterwards, and he, he gives her proper aftercare and everything. So I really hate Christian, but I think if this was a cleverer book, this could have just been done to show that, you know, anyone can make mistakes and hurt people, but then they can get better. 
mm-hmm. but it just kind of it just didn't rise to the challenge i guess you say you know it's like oh christian thought about it but he just had to think about it you know he doesn't have to change anything he's doing okay and to build on that uh here's a quote now i'm going to peel you out of this dress something i've wanted to do for a few days if i recall I want you to be comfortable with your body, Anastasia. <laughs> you have a beautiful body, and I like to look at it. It's a joy to behold. In fact, I could gaze at you all day, and I want you unembarrassed and unashamed of your nakedness. Do you understand? Um, could you go back and reread that in a super nerd voice? Yes. <laughs> I was actually going to do it to begin with, but I didn't want to ruin... Uh, I kind of hear it, that's why. No, I'm going to peel me out of this dress. Something I wanted to do for a few days, if I recall. <laughs> I want you to be comfortable with your body, Anastasia. You have a beautiful body, and I like to look at it. <laughs> it is a joy to behold. In fact, I can gaze at you all day, and I find you unembarrassed and unashamed of your nakedness. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm sorry. So it was more of the stuff that I wanted to read in the earlier spanking scenes where he, he guides her along a little bit. And in episode, in episode 17, I said that I think the way to do things like a good Dom would especially with vanilla subs, is to talk them through, just in the way that I said was a good way. Uh, Here's another quote. Good girl, Anastasia. You look lovely like that. Well done. Stand up. And he's praising her for something concrete here, which is to, you know, assume the sub position, basically. Like, don't look at him. Mm -hmm. Knees on the floor, legs spread apart, keep your shoes on, that kind of thing. So praising her for (laughs) concrete things and not just telling her she's so, like, amazing and unexpected. Like, I think that's good. And I wish that there was more of that. Yeah, I agree. They have chicken Caesar salad, which is one of my favorite dishes. (laughs) So that was good. Trayden was like, whoa. (laughs) And she was sad that the rest of the chapter was so shitty. Yeah, it's like, we'll get back to the salad, you guys. I'm sure there's some left. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It doesn't sound like Christian's one to leave things. Yeah. Here's a thing that Christian is saying. Place your hands and forearms flat on your thighs. Good. Now part your knees wider, wider. Perfect. Look down at the floor. James doesn't like describe Anna's actions, uh, reacting to each command. We could just infer what's going on from the dialogue, which is good, and she should do that more often. Instead of just being like, he tells me to sit down. I sit down, sitting down. <laughs> I mean, it's just good. Uh, less is more. It's better writing. <laughs> yeah, less is more. Yeah, I think Maybe. if she relied on more dialogue, um, and also her dialogue wasn't shit. Yeah. The, the book would flow a lot better because I mean one of the big problems with uh, the narration is that it's Anastasia and well one Anastasia doesn't have a consistent voice we've talked about this a lot before and two it just all comes off as like like run on dialogue there's like no real separation because of the type of narrator that Anna, Anna is anyway I'm sorry did you no, have was... anything uh, that you thought was good um no <laughs> okay. okay. Safe word then. I haven't sung anything. I know, but I'm breaking all the rules these days. Are you going to hit me? Yes, but it won't be to hurt you. I don't want to punish you right now. If you caught me yesterday evening, well, that would have been a different story. Holy cow, he wants to hurt me. How do I deal with this? I can't hide the horror on my face. Dot dot dot. I should run, but I can't. I'm drawn to him on some deep elemental level that I can't begin to understand. Uh, it's a concrete elemental level. It is a concrete <laughs> elemental level. It's just like, again, with that thing of like, like maybe it's not really consent, and he's kind of just saying like, oh no, I'm I don't want to hurt you, but then you know, yeah, he's doing yeah. the sadist thing. Like he's he just like yeah, okay. It's good to be more reserved, and it seems more like he's engaging in a fantasy now more than scary thing where he doesn't respect her boundaries yeah like it's done better but it's still (sighs) i mean when she says she can't hide the horror on her face because she doesn't like the idea of getting hurt that to me is kind of like a big warning sign so that's my safe word and then i also said the the use of the cable ties was also extremely stupid and how unsafe they are uh i agree with all of that also this is more for personal reasons but um my eyes start to droop boring you am i miss steel uh, so Anastasia's tired after getting fucked so hard. And she's like, I'm so tired. And he's like, am I boring you? <laughs> I just think this is always really rude. When, like, if you ever show, like, any signs of tiredness while someone is speaking to you. And they're like, oh, am I boring you? <laughs> oh, so stupid. Yeah. And, uh, they probably edit this out. But, like, my dad said to me once. And he was like, fine. I'm never going to tell you anything again. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> And I kind of hoped that he... I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
he will never tell me anything again. But uh, so, <laughs> but uh, so now, anytime anyone yawns, I'm like, oh, am I boring you? Just like really, <laughs> really like <laughs> facetiously mean. <laughs> All right, do you have a safe word, Chad? Chad, do you have a safe word? Oh, uh, mine is pretty much the same as yours, Trills, so. Fair enough. All right, now it's in the spoiler dungeon. So when is she going to sign the fucking contract? Do the sound. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That was nice. <laughs> when is she gonna sign the fucking contract? I didn't realize that this is gonna take so goddamn long. Well, I don't want to spoil the ending of the book because I think I would really like to keep that intact for the listeners who do not know how it ends. So they talk about the contract, and she's like, "Okay, well, you need me to agree to this, right?" And he's like, "No." And I'll punish you. Okay, now it's done. Are we ready? Yep. Okay, I have the first line, so I'll go. Hmm, what about us? The contract. Well, I think the contract is moot, don't you? Anyway, the rules aren't moot. They're st- they still stand. We've been in the playroom twice now, and you haven't run screaming for the hills. So let me be clear. You just want me to follow the rules element of the contract all the time, but not the rest of the contract? Except in the playroom. I want you to follow the spirit of the contract in the playroom. And yes, I want you to follow the rules all the time. <laughs> then I know you'll be safe, and I'll be able to have you any time I wish. And if I break one of the rules? Then I'll punish you. But you won't need my permission? Yes, I will. And if I say no? If you say no, you'll say no. I'll have to find a way to persuade you. <laughs> wow. So she doesn't sign it at all. Nope, or... not in this book anyways. Wow, interesting. <laughs> okay, alright. I thought I thought it was going to be like the climax, where she's like, I'm signing the contract. Finally, is Mia Blonde. Mia's not blonde. She's oh. brunette like Anastasia. And that's what I was going to say. Somebody in the next chapter shows up who's just like a household servant. Her name is like Gretchen. She's blonde. Uh, okay. Christian's sister Mia is not blonde. Okay. Therefore not a rival. Not a true li- rival anyways, because, you know, sister. Adopted sister. Yeah. Well, okay. You do have a point. <laughs> but she but she loves Anastasia. So, uh-huh. of course, not a problem. Well, everybody loves Anastasia. Of course. Of course they do. I, I don't love Anastasia. Anyway, the Mia looks basically just like Anastasia in a lot of ways. So mm, creepy. I think it's it's to make her more of a rival. Well, I mean, this sort of just lends credence to my theory that she's a clone, she's oh, yeah. an artificial human. She comes across as like definitely different from Anastasia, like thinner and prettier. Maybe <laughs> I could just be projecting there. All right. Well, I think we're done. Okay. Yep. I think we're done. Alright, so leaders, baby. Leaders, baby.